In this video, we'll talk about Stream API. Now, before we understand Stream API, first of all, it's a new concept. It came in 1.8, Java 1.8 basically, and it provides you some amazing feature. The only thing is, why do we need those features? We'll understand that first. So what I will do is, first of all, I want to create a list of values. Okay, so let's create a list here. And I will say this is of type integer, and I will say nums. And of course, just to keep it simple, I'm going with the default names so that you, you don't have to focus much on the naming convention. I want you to focus on the concept. So we have the add list here. And in this add list, I want to have some values. We have nums dot, let's add some values. So I would say add four. In fact, you know what I want to do? Instead of adding values like this, there's another, another way you is using which you can add values in the list, uh, which is there's a class called arrays and arrays dot as list. And you can simply pass the values here instead of uh, manually typing the values, even this works. So as list is a method which gives you a list and it belongs to a class called arrays, okay? Uh, this is much simpler, right? Now, once you got this list, what if you want to print these values? Of course, I can say s out and I can say nums. And if, by doing this, we can simply uh, print all the values and you can see we got all the values. Now, what if I want to perform some operation on this? Okay, now what kind of operation I'm talking about? So let's say I want to uh, double all these values. And in fact, I want to first apply the filter here. So let's say I don't want uh, odd numbers. I only want to focus on even numbers. Example, we have four and then we have two. Uh, ignore this dot dot a, basically it represents an array. Uh, so we got this four and two, I want to filter them. And whatever filter, whatever value you get after filtering, I want to double those values. So example, four and two becomes eight and four. And at the end, I want to reduce it. So I want to say, okay, eight plus four is 12. So I want the output to be 12. The way you can do that, first of all, I want to apply the filter, right? So we can use a for loop and we can go from the first row to last value. So I can say int n colon from nums. And once you get this value, I want to apply the filter because see, I don't want to add all the values. I want to add only the odd numbers and that too after doubling it. I want to add even numbers basically. So we can check if my n mod two is equal to equal to zero. That means that's an even number. If that's an even number, I will first of all double the value. So I will say n is equal to n into two. So doubling done. And then once you have doubled it, I want to add it to a, to a sum, let's say, I will create an int sum variable, the initial value is zero. And whatever doubling you get, you simply say sum is equal to sum plus n, okay? Uh, so by doing this, what I'm doing is from all the values which we have here, let's say we have some more values, let's say six as well. And let me add one more value here, which is three. So you can see we have so many values, but I want to, first of all, filter only even numbers. For example, I want to fetch this four, uh, then this two, then this six. I want to double each value. So example, eight, uh, four becomes eight, uh, two becomes four, and six becomes 12. So this is eight plus four is your 12. 12 plus 12 is 24. I want the output to be 24. And let's see, do we really get 24 here? Let me print the value for sum, compile and run. And you can see we got 24. Now this is one way of performing the operation on your list. Now, sometimes you perform such an easy operation and sometimes maybe you do something by using which the values, in fact, the original values get changed. So instead of doing those things, uh, we got this amazing way of doing this calculation, which is called a stream API. Now it was introduced in, uh, in later version before this, people used to work with this way, but in, in stream, we got a different way of doing this. Okay. Now, basically we got this new thing, uh, which is called stream. So if I jump to stream, which belongs to java.util.stream package. And if I click on stream, you can say stream is an interface and it provides you multiple methods like we got filter. That makes sense, right? If you want to apply the filter on the stream or the collection, we can use filter. If you want to change a value, example, we have doubled the values, right? That can be done with the help of map. And we'll individually see these methods later. So if you go down, you have sorted. In fact, there's also a method called reduce. We are going to use that as well. Yeah, so there's reduce as well. Okay, we'll see that later. So basically stream provides a lot of methods to work with this. Now, how, how exactly to use stream that we'll see in the uh, next video. But before that, I want to show you one thing. So, let, uh, so let's say we got, we, we were able to do this, right? At this point, I will, I will just comment this section because we'll talk about that later. I want to do one more thing before we start with stream, which is how do I print all these values? A simple printing. 
So we can use a normal for loop, right? The normal for loop works in this way. We can use int i is equal to zero and int i less than, uh, we have to get the nums dot length or size. Yeah. The method name is size and then we have to say i plus plus. So we have basically we have to use normal for loop and then we can print each value. I can say nums dot get, I can pass the index value. And if I clear this, compile and run, and you can see we got all the values here. Okay, there's one way. Uh, I can comment this section. The another way of doing this is using a normal for loop. I can say for int n is equal to num. And here I can simply print the value of num. Even this works, right? Now you tell me which is better, using a normal for loop or the enhanced for loop. See normal for loop, what it does is it basically goes to the loop or it basically goes to the list by saying, hey, I want to fetch the first element. I want to fetch the second element. Right. On the other hand, if we talk about the enhanced for loop, it says the array itself will give you the value and that value goes into n. Right. Now, again, this too looks good, but then we have a better way of doing it. So I can just comment this section. The better way is very simple. What you can do is you can say nums dot. Now we got a new method called for each method. Now using this for each, it will give you one value at a time. You can save that in n. And then you can simply come back here and you can say, I want to print this n here. So for each is a part of the list interface. You can simply say for each, and then it will give you one value and you can do whatever you want to do with that value. So I'm just printing it here and here. And if I compile this and run, you can see we got the same output. So we have three options now. We can use a normal for loop, we can use the enhanced for loop, or we can use a for each method. But how exactly this for each method works? We'll see that in the next video.